What's up, ADD fam? Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. So, today, I'm just going to touch bases on a few things that I've been thinking about for some reason. I've been thinking about guys that I've known in the street and in jail that like to brag on crimes they've committed. They like to run their mouths. I've seen many a guy run their mouths and put their own foot in it. So the last time I was in, last time I was in jail was in El Pod, and I've mentioned it a few times before, but I, I haven't told a lot about a lot of the people in there. So your average person in there, as I discussed, is going to prison. Like I said, it's a 95% dorm. 95% of people are going to prison, and 5% of people are going home. Literally, really no shit. So, I was in there with this one dude, and I can't, I don't remember his name. I don't even think I'd have remembered his name a, a year after I got out. So, anyways, it was this, this young cat, right? His deal and his M.O. He was one of these spoiled rich kids. And young kid, I was probably 38, 39, something like that. He was probably 22, 23, right? And it, and it was this tall, skinny guy, right? Let's call him Eric if I need an, a name. Tall, skinny, both, had, both arms were sleeved, tattoos. He had already been to prison. And his dad had money. He owned this, um, there's a building. How I can remember so well is, um, you know, some of these people had some things about them that were, that were, you know, that I, places I drove by. This guy was telling me about how his dad had bought this, um, piece of property. It's right at Canton Road and Hawkins Store. If you know, if you know anything about where I, where I live. So he's always, was always telling a story about his dad was the one that built that building. And there's a building there to this day. And right after I got out of jail, um, you know, I, I drove by there a lot. I still drive by there every now and then. So every time I drive by that building, I think of this kid. And this kid was, would tell me that this was his deal. Okay, he was a, he was a huge crackhead. <whistles> We're feeding kitties. We're feeding two cats now. Maybe you can see the black and white cat back there. <whistles> there's that cat and then there's another one back there, Junior. So anyways, this kid's bragging and complaining, telling me all the shit he had done. And telling me about charges, about things he had done that he hadn't even been caught for. Just some people are just too stupid for their own good, you know, their own worst enemy. So this young kid, he was a crackhead. He used to tell me he used to hang, he used to, he'd sit out by the plug all day by the hood, and there would be this place at the bottom of the hill. You'd have to go through the woods or drive down to. But at the bottom of the hill was where all the crack dealers hung out. But he would go to the top of the hill, he say, and people that would come up, mainly white people that would come up and get crack, he would get their money and go get them crack and or rip them off. So this is, you know, this was 89% of his stories about all his crack act crackhead ex expeditions, you know, ripping people off, fighting with people, etc., etc. Along with being a crackhead, this kid was a thief. Why? I would never know. Like I said, his dad oh, built this building that's doing, that does very well. Let's say, uh, it's like sports goods for something, right? This big sports goods warehouse his dad owned the property the lot like i said i knew exactly what he was talking about it's in my old stomping grounds and so you know we're talking about a kid that's come for money 
So he's telling me about all his robberies. He's telling me about stealing cars. And he's telling me about shit that he hasn't and been caught for. Dumbass, right? So he's telling me about this car they stole. They stole a car, they broke in, they hotwired it, they were driving around town, and they ditch it, right? They go and pull a burglary in it, so now this car is, is hot, right? Even just talking about, and this guy's, and this kid's telling me details. Um, telling me what kind of car it was, uh, roads, streets, like all kind of information you could use against him, right? So, I... I hum humored people like that. I let him tell his stories, and and you and you know you humor people when you wish the best for them. So, like I said, he's telling me about these robberies and these um, carjackings that he's not been caught for. And sure as shit, as you are, you're gonna know what's gonna happen. Of course, he goes to run his mouth. Someone overhears him. There's first of all when you're in jail. Every man for himself. You you have no friends, right? Your 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 best friend to throw you under the bus, sell you out. To uh, um, I got people that I'm friends with still this day and time. The people I ran with were like that. So when you're talking about people you're not even friends with, you can bet your sweet ass that they're gonna be looking out for themselves and not you. So like I said, this dumbass kid goes on for months about his. Um, his, he's done some. He's now broken into. He's broken into homes. He stole a car. He's telling me he's worried as hell. This D, you know, his DNA is going to come back. He's asking me all kind of questions. You know, this. Do you think they could catch my? Blah 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 blah. You think by my DNA he did something and uh, he cut his arm and so he had some drops of blood. The dumbass kid left blood behind in the car he stole and left behind. Right. Left it out in the woods. Didn't get caught for it. So I'm saying I'm, I'm not quite sure, you know. And he's going on. He's telling me about his home. Um, I don't even know if you would consider that a home invasion. You, you go in someone's house. That's pretty much home invasion. It just, I don't know if you can tell me if someone has to be in there, if you have to kidnap them to actually consider it a home invasion. But he's telling me a story about he goes in a house and they're in there. and the, And there's an old lady in there and she wakes up. She comes down the hall. She starts screaming and hollering. He tells her, man, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. And winds up blasting grandma, right? He's, you know, he hit her. He puts her, to, he puts grandma down out of fear. And, you know, out of just pure fear, he levels grandma. And so he doesn't get caught for this. This is not what he's in the jail for. But he's telling all these fucking stories and he's and he's and he's loud about it. Like I said, he had to be at least twenty something. So he, he wasn't, you know, six he wasn't no seventeen year old kid. He was at least nineteen, twenty, maybe twenty one. I'd say twenty one, twenty two, or twenty three. Somewhere in there. And he's telling about breaking in this house and grandma waking up from the nap and having to put her down. And he's telling these stories in front of a whole bunch of people. Not one or two, like half the dorm can hear this. People are, you can tell people, when people, you can tell when someone's listening in your conversation, right? You've all, we've all done it, been, been aware of it. You know, you were in the mall with your family, something or other. Even as a little kid, you have memories of people looking at you, and you can tell when someone's eavesdropping or when someone's around, right? Well, how this dumbass kid didn't get to get the idea that, he, that there was people listening in is beyond me. So he tells me about how he busted off on grandma, had to put grandma down, didn't kill her, but had to beat her up. And uh, and they tied her up because they were scared, they're, you know, they couldn't get away, whatever. He beats up grandma. This is in our town too now, keep in mind. We're not talking about, you know, across the country. He's telling about his grandma story. He's telling about his stolen car and the few home, uh, the, the burglars that he's done, right? And he's bragging and complaining at the same time, right? This goes on for a while. It goes on for several months. And I'm surprised that it didn't happen sooner. So this 
kid, like I said, he's airing out his laundry. And, uh, hey, that stinks. Go way over there. So he's airing out his laundry. And sure as shit, who do you, would you think that it would be? There's 72 guys in a dorm on your average given day. Out of 72 guys, this 22-year-old kid sitting here basically telling the world, singing the blues about all his burglars and all his dirt he's done. And it's his roommate that put throws him under the bus. His own cellmate. This, this, um, this dude, I was... I had to be cellmates with him too. Like you, you, you'd be switching cellmates all the time, right? In a, in a few months, it didn't matter who or what your circumstance was. Nine times out of ten, you would, you're all the time going to be getting new cellies. It's just how it is. And like I said, I was in there for six months, so I can't even, I, I can't even count, can't even tell you how many different cellmates I had. So this guy's cellmate is the, the. Um, the uh, cookie monster of the dorm, right? The guy, and I wind up, um, and I wind up running into the guy. He want his cellmate Groucho winds up working in Taco Bell. This is this is at, way after this, right? So his cellmate is Groucho of the of the cell, and uh, you know the stinky guy that don't shower. Um, nasty zits all over his chest, all over his shoulder and his face. Just one of these, you know, one of these kind of people you just don't want to be around. And so how I knew all this, like I said, is I got stuck being his uh, bunkie. So he's in there bragging, telling, telling the world his business. And it's his cellmate who throws him under the bus, right? So we're all sitting around the table one day. And they come over, and when as soon as a detective's about to come in, they come in and they make us an announcement, right? Like alerting of everyone: um, go to your rooms or stand, stand, but be aware. Like when the like when anyone comes in the dorm, a nurse, uh, CO, whatever, they kind of alert it, right? So they make the alert call of the cops coming in, you know, like for everyone either stand or no or get by, go to your room. Usually when someone come in, they either make you go to your room or, or line up. Usually, the majority of the time when someone come in, it was usually pill call. They would make a call, everyone had to stop what they're doing and so they can listen and pay attention, right? And then all the guys are on pills will go up to the line and they'll go on as normal. The few times that it happened while I was in between these two different pods. Every time a detective would come in, they would do this um, announcement, right? Like everyone stop what you're doing and give them your undivided attention, right? Like if, if you were sitting there playing cards, you'd have to stop. There'd be shows going on and you'd have to turn the TV off. And so you could almost see it coming. Out of the blue, just not paying no attention. And they, and they come in and make their announcement. And I look up and it's two detectives. They come in, they grab the kid, they take him into the uh, questioning booth, et cetera, et cetera. And the kid winds up getting um, these heavy, out of this world type charges on him, right? He did it to himself. The dumbass was sitting there bragging and complaining and his own fucking bunk mates the one that threw him under the bus. And the 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 most fucked up part of the whole deal was his bunkie, the one that no one wanted to have as a roommate. He didn't have shit, right? This kid, them saying he had money, he had he I think the max you could get was sixty bucks a week, right? He maxed it out every week. That was that's rare, you know maybe out of all the people when there's like out of 70 guys one or two guys can get um sixty dollars every week you know most people don't have it like that on average you know on average a good person has twenty dollars a week it was many times i had zero dollars so this kid had all this money and food and he's feeding the 
uh, the Groucho Cookie Monster, and he's feeding him good. And he's the one that turns around and stabs him in the back. And he was going home. He was a he was a short timer. He had uh, I don't remember what it was, but whatever it was it was some kind of assault and battery charge. But he was going to prison. But he was only going to prison to go to, through diagnostics. If you know what that is, if you don't know what that is, that's you go to prison. You go down there. And they threw they put you through a month of diagnostics, like. I guess like all these tests and shit run on you, right? And um, find out everything there is to know about you. And he goes to diagnostics and goes home. He didn't get no time shortened. He didn't get no probation. The guy just did it just to do it. Out of pure jealousy and hatred for the fact that this young kid, you know, had money and he didn't. It's like that. I've seen that shit in jail for 30 years. I've seen it out here on the street, the same. I've seen people throw other people under the bus. So I tell you about my boy DC, right? While I was in, while I was still in addiction, this is like two plus years ago, after that big job we did, and I'm still fucking with DC, right? I'm shooting dope. And I go over there one day, and the day before, um, someone OD'd and died in his bedroom, right? I told a little bit about the story. Yeah, someone dropped dead right in his fucking bedroom. When I OD'd, it was the time that, I, right at the same time that I had OD'd, DZ had told me, watch out, be careful. This shit's too powerful. Watch what you do. That's the time I OD'd. Day before, dude OD'd and dropped dead in his fucking bedroom. Can you imagine that? So, they leave um, Jason behind. Jason's Tony's brother. Jason, Tony's brother's living over there with him. Jason's like, um, Jason's um, Wendell's um, auto mechanic, um, lackey friend. You know how drug dealers will, will carry around a lackey with them. You know, the fall guy. Jason was pretty much kind of like Daisy's fall guy, right? So, guy drops dead. And uh, Wendell tells him the story. I ask, I, I gotta hear this one. So they're in there shooting dope. They tell the guy, this is extra powerful shit. You know, whatever you're used to doing, cut that in half, try that, do it again. Guy, just like most drug addicts, goes in, fuck what he's got to say, did his regular amount, dropped dead right there in front of all of them, right in DZ's bedroom, bam, OD didn't die, there was no Narcan him or nothing, he died right then, DZ leaves the house, and he leaves Jason to talk and fend for the police, right, DZ can't be around, he's a dope dealer, police come, make all their police reports, and the guy's pronounced are dead. And so they take him up out of there, right? Do you think this was going to just blow over? No. Never does. Never will. Every single person out there that I've ever known, even if they were the biggest piece of shit in the world, everybody's got somebody. Very few people in this world, especially in this country, that don't have no one that would, you know, look after them or, or care that they're dead or not. There's very few people that are like that. So this kid was, this was a guy that was not like that. So this guy's, and I don't, don't quote me on this because it wasn't his wife and it wasn't his girlfriend, but it was his family member. It was his immediate sister or sister-in-law or something like that. His family member winds up calling the police and, and calls the police, and calls the police, and calls the police. Do you feel me now? She's, she's calling, ringing it off the hook. Police are now driving by Dizzy's house every day, okay? This is two plus years ago. How he just got ran, how he just got um, raided, and I told the story, it's not that long ago now, what, a couple of weeks now maybe? How it took all that time to get raided is beyond me. You know, you tell me, I don't, I don't have a fucking clue how, but this kind of shit goes like that, right? 
they wait, they sit on it, they, they watch, they wait and they watch, they wait and they watch, right, so they've been waiting and watching, and Deezy's been moving more dope, more hair on through Atlanta than, than your average drug dealer, right, like I said, he's, Deezy's always been a full throttle guy, right, me and the rest of my dude, people that I knew would, you know, take it easy or we're only fooling with so many people. There's no on or off switch for DZ. People buy the fucking boatloads, right? So we're now, like I said, at one point there was 50 people around me that all went to jail. And there was only like 25, 20 of us that didn't. I was the minority that didn't go to jail. It was hanging out with DZ. Because as I said before, it's, it's hot. It's hot in that in that world, in that dope game. It stays hot. They stay having the police on their ass. So, guy drops dead in Deezy's house. His his stepdaughter's baby's daddy gets murdered at the gas station. And so after this, you know, there's there's all of these um, inter interlinking contacts, right? You see what I'm saying? Like there there's like all this dirt and kind of shit like this that's all leading back to Daisy, right? So even before this, okay, even before this, before the job, or maybe was it right before the job? Shit, my wife's calling.